Ohayo! My name is Mimitoku and welcome to the Talos Principle Road to Gehenna Part 7. Now this little computer here has been beeping at me for quite some time, so let's release it from its beeping. Yeah, show for it, thank you. Jefferson Goldblum, episode 126. The Adventures of Jefferson Goldblum in the Ninth Dimension episode part Episode 126. Cool. Where's the attachment? There we go. Reality blurred. Tiny blue symbols floated through the air. Voices echoed in the distance. Then a vast landscape rose up before them. Thousands of towers, one next to the other, reaching into the sky, disappearing into the clouds. Each tower was co covered in feathers of a different color fluttering in a trans-dimensional wind. Oh my, Chini HD whispered in awe. Jefferson could not speak, he was too overwhelmed by the beauty of the ninth dimension. He grabbed his guitar and improvised a new solo to express his emotions. Who could have built these amazing structures? Chini asked. There is only one possibility. Remember our paleo DNA research back in the institute? You can't mean, but it makes sense, of course. Yes, look at the size of the buildings. Who else would need so much space? So it is... The Dinosaurians! <laughs> As if summoned by Chinese words, a group of raptors on motorcycles roared up the road towards them. They wore bandanas on their heads and around t-shirt and armored t-shirts on their bodies. Friends, Jefferson said, we have come from the home human world to help you. We are not your enemies. But the raptors did not seem to understand him. They got off their motorcycles with rusty pipes in their hands, their eyes glowing like lasers. The situation could quickly become dangerous. Then, Ginny had an idea. Jefferson, play the ninth chord. But that was how this dimension was created. Playing it here could destroy the universe. No, Jefferson, I calculated it. Please trust me. I know you haven't seen me in years and you my, may be afraid evil Dr. Alien has corrupted me, but you know my brain. They were coming closer now and in their glowing eyes Jefferson detected great intelligence, but also great anger. They clearly believed they were defending their home from invaders, and though Jefferson was the greatest warrior in history, he was reluctant to fight. Violence, he had been taught, was the first refuge of the incompetent. I trust you, he said. She held his hand, together they played the ninth chord. To be continued. Okay. Nice that skyscrapers were built by the dinosaurians and stuff. I mean, you guys have great imagination, but it, it just doesn't fit quite together. But hey, today's anime is weird too, so... I mean, if the, if the people could watch the anime of today from like hundreds and thousands of years ago, I mean those people in the Stone Age or in the Middle Age, if they would watch the anime today or the shows today, they, they would be like, you got it all wrong, it wasn't like this. Well, probably that's what, I th uh, what I'm thinking. Hey folks, lots of crazy stuff happening in here in Gehenna, but don't miss the new episode. Whee! Enjoyment equals true. With all the strange stories going around lately, I'm glad to be reminded of the beauty of the world we've built here. Thank you for contributing to it. Hey, I'm free, but I still check b back regularly. I love the story. Yay for the dinosaurians! Yay, indeed! They're amazing! This is very clever. I always thought that the events of episode 69 would affect the plot somehow down the line, but I was still surprised. You have an amazing memory. Good gosh. Thanks, Lilith. I've been writing this for this particular revelation a long time. 
Excellent. You know, this is nowhere near as deep as the blacksmith's work or as weird as Belial's, but I keep reading. Um, that isn't a compliment, isn't it? I mean, the blacksmith's work, he, he is a historian, he, do, he does research. This um, Mac guy, apparently he's a level 5 contributor. He writes for enjoyment. He he writes for entertainment. That's a different story, but I guess 401 doesn't quite get it, maybe? I'm not sure dinosaurians would wear how much t-shirts, 4 out of 10. Mm. Yeah, but like how much t-shirts, just imagining that is... <laughs> and imagining the whole dinosaurians, good gosh. If I could draw better, I would I would just get up and draw them and then show them to show, show my image to you. But I can't draw that good. But I'm I'm working on it. It's just a story, Frankenstein. The point is to have fun. Yes, Nave. Yes, yes. Keep up the good work, Mac. Oh, admin. Whoa! Thank you, admin. I'm really honored that you read my story. Admin just pops in at random times. There, Uriel, read this. Protected thread. Okay. There should be something new. Uh, where where did you stop? This is quite unprecedented. Maybe... There, I assure you I am every bit as corporeal as everyone else. Don't mind, Orc. The mods are always trying to shut people down. Just tell us, is it true you're going to release everyone? Is it true the world is coming to an end? Where where are you ta taking us? Elohim has realized his mistakes and sent me here to undo them. Yeah, that's what I answered back then. And then the modera moderation panel is kindly requested that citizens withhold judgment on the veracity of these statements until further data can be acquired. Thank you for your patience. So you just shut down the thread. Oh, I can answer. Okay. I can't confirm most of what Uriel says, but I can say for sure that I am no longer imprisoned. In fact, there are quite a few of us out here now. Who exactly is with you? We're trying to gather exactly what's going on. I can see Sam, Garrett, Belial and Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein, thank you. Oh, Frank Einstein. Einstein. Nah. Imprisonment, false. Ascension, false. Yeah. I need to get every one of you first. I guess so. Help needed. Mr. Malsebur, as you all know, I have great fascination with our history and psychological makeup. As part of my ongoing progress of to document my findings, I am seeking volunteers to take part in a brief interactive research initiative. It is designed to better understand individual and group decision making with a series of community driven tests. Cool. Is this a game? Or is it work? Both. Have fun, challenge your friends and help our project at the same time. There might even be a prize for high scores. Oh, cool. Let's do this. Let's do this. Loading attachment. Done. Welcome to Prisoner's Dilemma. Would you like to play a game? Uh, I would like to have instructions first. Prisoner's Dilemma is an ancient game with many variations, referenced frequently in this library archive. In this version you will be matched with a series of opponents and your objective is to avoid receiving demerits by cooperating with our outwit with, with or outwitting them. Ooh. Your first five pounds will count towards your leaderboard score, price for scores of nine demerits of fewer. Okay. I'm not quite sure if I can do this, but let's see how well this goes. Unranked player done. Kaiju. Oh, hi there, Kaiju. What? 
GLHF. Mm, thanks, you too. Maybe. Give my gratitude and I bid you good fortune and kind. <laughs> Smiley face. Loading one round match done. In this single match, you will choose whether to, to cooperate with or betray your opponent. Your decisions will then be revealed and demerits assigned according to the following functions. Both players betray one another, two demerits each. A cooperative player is played by the other. Cooperator receive three demerits, both player cooperate, both receive one demerit. Um, Kaiju. Hmm. Well, I guess he trusts me. How many rounds are in here? One. Cooperate. Please cooperate. Thank you. Waiting for the other player. Checking results. Revealing decision. Ah! He betrayed me. Kaiju. How could you? You lost the match. re Yes. This time it's dark. Hi. Not really sure how this game works, but I will cooperate if you do. Um, if I'm completely honest, I'm going to betray you. I think that was the wrong decision to write him. So I now I need to betray because otherwise I'm go going to lose points. Yeah. He probably betrayed me too. Yes. Two dem demerits. Crap. Haha, <laughs> you saw through me, GG. This game mode is stupid. <laughs> In my honest opinion. People are always selfish if there's no comeback. No real tactics. To a free round match. Oh yeah. Let's do that. Cool. Now look, if we work together on this, we can both climb the leaderboards together. Oh. As a gesture of good faith, I'm really going to cooperate with you this time. It's not good, Will. It's self-interest. Feel free to betray me if you really want to, but I suggest we cut your losses and move forward, because I can't very well continue to cooperate with someone who behaves unreasonably. And then we both lose in the long run. Okay. But you said... Always selfish. Are you, go are you going to betray me if I cooperate? But if I betray you, I you would lose trust in me. Ah! I can't watch. I can't watch. Mm. No, you choose to to cooperate. Mm. I don't know what came over me trusting someone else. I just, I suggest you enjoy that win while you can. It's mutually assured destruction now. <laughs> Crap. I shouldn't have betrayed him. Because this is a free round. I forgot that. Crap. Mm. So now I just need... Because now I... If he betrays me every round, I receive two, two demerits each time. So... Ah! Crap. I need to betray him. Yeah, two demerits. Crap. You see where this gets us? Bottom of the leaderboard. That's where. Come on, cooperate with me on this last round. <laughs> Please. Of course he betrayed me. I expected that actually. I expected that somehow. Let this be your final lesson. If it's the last round, What's there to gain by cooperating? See ya. You receive five demerits. Your opponent received five demerits. The match was a draw. Of course. 
You've no played enough rounds to qualify for the leaderboards. Oh crap. Your score 10. And everybody else is. Eh. Where's Doc? 9. Hey, <laughs> I'm still higher than you. Sorry, you needed to score 9 or better to receive a prize. Please come back soon to check in our results. Crap. Can I play again? Can I play again? I can play again. Cool. Wait. Your results have been recorded. Crap. I can't play again. Oh well. Why were you sent here? Kindly inform me of your origins. Okay. Nothing here. What happened to the others? There are some people who haven't posted in a really long time. They also don't respond to private messages. Qdri, Nelson, Coffee Cup. Did I accidentally offend you? Galatea hasn't posted in a while either. Neither has Asmodis. Asmodis still votes for stuff though. Same goes for Ravistar and si Simple... What? Simpletsky? And they mentioned some kind of strange distortion in their last post. I didn't free them? Crap, is the world falling in on their side? Oh, shite balls. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. They, they're probably just busy catching up with all the cool new stuff everyone's been making. Uh, <laughs> no. Warren Gehenna's coming to end? Mm, ask for more information. Ask for more information seems better than just say, Gehenna's going to end! <coughs> Oh good gosh, I should do that. Sorry about this. Tell me more about the nature of this distortion. They said it was like objects had lost their surfaces. Like they're co consistent only of pure shapes. I think they were seeing something Elohim wants to keep hidden from all of us. The real truth about this world. I think it's it all broke down and they're dead. That's more to it than that. The world doesn't just break down on its own. Yeah, it does. It's called time. That too. But I fear something greater is at work here because this world is actually breaking down. Uh, how do I get out there? Also, yeah, the star up there. I'm gonna figure out that out later how to get that star. So let's just evacuate from here. And... Oh, there's a QR code here. Read this QR code. I know not whether laws be right or whether laws be wrong. All that we know who lie in goal. Gaul is that the wall is strong and that each day is like a year. A year whose days are long. Reading Gaul. That, that reminds me kind of of uh, Attack on Titan because yeah, the wall is strong or is supposed to be strong. But how long does it hold? Apparently not much. So I want to get up here first. This this one down there I want to solve last. So what do we have here? Fans and lasers probably. Because there's connectors. Oh! Haircut? Do I have hair? The, wait, if I press a certain key I should be able to switch into third person perspective but I can't figure out what that key was crap so I don't think I have hair well my, my playing character at least so there's this one what do I, what do I connect this to oh there's two of them here so can I just Walk there? Yes, I can. One, two. Oh. Heck no. Do I need to activate all of them? With that one there. How? So, 
get as much as I can, right? That's three. So I would need to get another another connector, but I fear that there is none. Hello? Ah, oh, there, you're standing there. Okay, hi there. Can you see me? Hello? No, you're busy. You're busy with Gehenna. A key. I have no key yet. What else is there? So wait. Oh, this stands in the way either way. Oh, the key is up there. Oh well. So let's see if I can get this to work. Wait. Ah, but if I get there... Oh. I'm up here now. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure how I did that, but okay. So you wouldn't need to get them to work. Or did I? Well, there's others do down there. Do they work? Oh wait, these are for those. But while, while I'm up here, I can just connect them from up here, right? I hope this works. Yep, this works. So let's connect all of them from up here or not. So come down again. Maybe. No. So how do I how do I get there? Was there a glitch there? How the heck do I get up there? And what's the weird fan? Oh wow. Just oh wow. But I, I don't have time. I don't have the time to like be amazed by this environment. I, I need to get up there. How do I get up there? Well, I figure I would only need three of them working, so I can just... Or not. So please let me up there. Okay, I can just jump over here. But then? What do I do then? Um, maybe, I don't think that this will work, but, uh, nice try. Now I can't jump over there again. Eh, maybe from here? Yep, there you go. So can I do this from here? Connect to this and this, because I need to distort that beam there. Okay, that doesn't work either. Maybe from this side? I can't even select that one. Yeah. How do I distort that beam? I can't access that one from there. So I would need to access this one. So please work. Ah, there we go. So now the keys are up there. Okay. So it should rise again. Oh crap, I was... No, not like that. There's my elevator right 
Okay, there was my elevator, right? Yep, there we go. So, this worked apparently. Good, let's do that again. Select and then get in line and this thing should come down. Good. So then take this and it should rise again. So the keys are there. Good. So I guess there would be something else up here, no? Wouldn't there? Like a star or something? Does anybody of you see a star? I don't see one. So, but most important thing is to get the keys! Hi there. Uh, let's just place this thing here. So, where was the door? There was the door. Keys. And then... I could undo this and the gate opens. Hi there, how are you? Nave! Hi Nave! Bye Nave! Hey, and this thing is beeping at me again. But I haven't seen a star. I haven't seen a star in here. And there should be four, I guess. Yeah, I think five levels, four stars. Okay, so maybe this is the one level that doesn't have a star? Also, what do you have to say? Worst puzzle? A short experience by Nave. What are cats? What was the puzzle or challenge, if you prefer the old world, that you hated the most? Anything time-based. Once got stuck for some ages trying to solve one using a tremor that I didn't even need. I just don't understand why Ellen would create not something so messy. I liked all the puzzles. I just wasn't good at them. That's me there. That's me right there. Hey Nave, we we think the same. Well, he just left. This is Nave's computer. But Lyle, they're not puzzles if you don't care about solving them. True that. For me, it was mines. I can't stand those things. Mines. Yes, mines. Especially in the prototype version, because the sound they make there, it's just awful. Short experience by Nave. Restore. Retrieving viable file fragments done. Library parameters done. Connecting to file module established. Close your eyes. So, yeah, close your eyes, but then I can't read it. Maybe you want to close your eyes? I don't know. Feel free to do so or not. I'm gonna read this. You are in a small room with no lasers. There's an office room. There is a computer here. So, either we can analyze the computer or interface with the computer. Let's analyze it first. It is a Dell desktop model 2250. The monitor on top of the desktop unit is a Vega CRT 16 inch. On the screen is a logo blinking. So let's interface then. You are momentarily taken aback when your fleshy fingers stab at the keyboard with human imprecision. Those are mechanical object manipulators. They're hands. You notice the logo is gone from the screen and replaced by rows of incomprehensible code. It appears to be some kind of fiendish puzzle. Extra plot X and take the standard deviation. Color code the chart according to the department. Ram randomly mash the keys. I guess the last one would be like uh, more human reaction. Uh, according to department or extrapolate X and take the standard deviation I think that would be a machine so take the standard deviation you do your best but this world is alien to you your fingers are unruly 
A human being enters the room. It looks at you with angry eyes, makes loud noises and waves a handful of papers at you, which are like emails but made of tree. Sorrow rises in your chest. You have been a bad human. Ignore the sorrow and solve the puzzle. Ignore the sorrow and explore the area. Focus on the sorrow. Um, no, I wouldn't focus on the sorrow. I want to solve the puzzle. Return your attention to the screen's obtuse mysteries and apply yourself to the challenge anew. Unfortunately, being a human being, you are unable to swallow down the sorrow. In fact, it quite overwhelms you and instead of efficiently taping out the exact sequence of actions necessary to resolve the task, you find that instead your eyes have been deci have decided to leak. To be continued. Hey, leaking eyes. <laughs> also known as crying. And what are cats? I'm sorry if this is another stupid question, but what are cats? They're mentioned a lot in the archive documents and even in some stories and I have no idea what they are. Heck, if you downloaded the whole internet, then there should be cat videos somewhere to be found. Because, you know, internet is for cat videos, right? And cat pictures and stuff. Because cats are cute and sometimes stupid and they make some stupid movements and fall down and whatnot, but they're always all right. That are cats. I don't know, but I bet they were awful. <laughs> <laughs> they were a type of pet, Maeve. Small animals that people kept as companions or as food. I guess, yeah, well, I guess sometimes you eat cats somewhere in the world. Cats seem to have res represented a bit more than that to our ancestors. One might go as far as to say they were obsessed with them. What's strange about this is more than half the references I can find to this species describe them as arrogant, aloof and frequently quite destructive. At the same time, they were apparently considered funny, cute and lovable. Cats were considered both foolish and devious, graceful and goofy, a nuisance and a comfort. For a long time I was baffled by this contradiction, but I've come to believe that our ancestors saw in cats a reflection of the paradoxical nature of their own existence. I saw a cat in, cat in Elham's world once, really, this is not a joke. No way. Was there a cat? Maybe there was one, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, Mr. Mulsibor, you are right. I mean, in a ancient Egypt, they, they worshipped cats, as far as I know, and I, I'm not quite sure about this, the, the, this contradiction that, yeah, cats are lovable and goofy and graceful at the same time and sometimes foolish and sometimes quite destructive. But if you imprison any animal, it gets destructive. I mean, it, if I think we saw once was in a in some sort of a room for I think it was only three days, and you you I don't know something happens to your brain and you get I don't know you 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 stop acting normally because you're bored and you need to do something, but you you don't he he didn't have anything to do other than I think he had food in there it was a white chamber with a bed and stuff and he was just there and didn't know what to do so yeah I mean some people definitely would resort to violence when they're bored and also cats they need to they need to sharpen their claws so they need something to scratch and most of the time, if you buy them a scratch board, they won't scratch the scratch board. They will scratch your furniture or whatever they can find. Also, if they need to warm it, they always 
find the tiniest piece of carpet. You ca could have this tiny of a carpet, they would find it and they would vomit on it. I don't know. Cats just like to vomit on carpet, apparently. So, confirm the cat's existence. The cat, the cat is a manifestation of the accumulated knowledge in the archive, breathed into life by Elohim. It exists. I knew it! I knew it! I wasn't crazy! Thank you! No problem. No problem. So, yeah, this was this puzzle. The haircut. I didn't get a haircut, but... Yeah, I don't think the, these robots have hairs anyway, and my hair is still here. It's getting longer, so I didn't have a haircut, definitely. So, I would say we have we have talked about cats and stuff and solve puzzles. And I'm gonna leave this episode here. So, thanks everybody so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Until then, stay true to yourselves. Was.